Good luck. Now, people among us again, and it's time to do another retro game bargain hunt pickup video. And surprisingly, yes, I still do these videos. You surprise me to how shit you are. <laughs> Right, basically what I think I should do first is just kind of update you what's been happening. Um, I haven't had like a retro game bargain hunt video for ages. Um, that's pretty much down to the fact that I can't find any bargains. I used to find loads of stuff at charity shops and bits and bobs. But honestly, I mean, I'm sat on like about, God, it must be about like 20 to 30 different charity shop visits, like worth of footage where like I haven't found anything at all. So... A bit disheartening really, you know, I kind of thought I could do something with it, but I mean, I'm just sat on all this footage and the few little bits and bobs I've managed to pick up have been like via Facebook and eBay and just the odd charity shop visit. But I mean, it's it's like nothing special and it's all kind of like built up um, and I've got something planned for later on this month, which I'll get into later on in the video. So I just didn't want the, these kind of little crappy pickups sort of getting in the way. Well, there's some good stuff, yeah. It's... It's, I don't know, it's just a bit disheartening. I just wanted to put that out there, like, because I used to put, like, a video out every couple of weeks, like, me going to the charity shops. And I might not have found, like, fantastic stuff, but I always found something, you know, like the odd PlayStation game. And sometimes I'd have a great bit of luck, like, I found some great Zelda games and um, Shadow of the Colossus and things like that. Um, you know, like for a pound and two pound and things. And that was just last year. But just, it seems over the past, like, I'd say six months, it's just been getting harder and harder to find. I mean, obviously, I find me PS2 fodder. But as far as PS2 goes as well, I'm just trying to, like, cut back with that. I didn't buy, like, everything I see like I used to. Because, I mean, a lot of it's crap and I'm not ever going to play. So I kind of just concentrate on PS2 titles now that I'm actually going to play. Like, when I see them in the in the charity shops, instead of just picking something up and going, Oh, that looks interesting. It's only, like, £1.50 or something. Like, it's got to be something, like, I know that I'm going to play like actually play because I'm at the point now where I haven't got much room to store my games and things so I'm having to put a lot of the stuff that I don't play like in drawers in another room just like out the way not on show just so I've got a bit of shelf space and a bit of like space to work with to like to add things to my collection that I want to so yeah I've yabbered on plenty about that so let's just get on with the pickups right me mega charity shop haul from pickups I mean it's all right it's just I don't know, it got to the point where I just wasn't filming when I went into every charity shop because I was just getting sick of filming and not finding anything. It was just like board games and DVDs constantly. Yeah, so these are some of the ones that I picked up. Um, Rampage Total Destruction on PS2. Uh, I love the arcade game. I think I've got it on a Midway Arcade's uh, Treasures PS2 game as well. But I just great arcade fun and um, this has got the original on as well and basically you know you're just like a giant monster and um, destroying a city really obviously this one's going to be in 3d because it's PS2 I'm not sure like how good it actually is but you know it's midway and I love the original and the originals on here so for 99 pence I thought I'm gonna have Next, that Rayman M I love me Rayman games and um, the first one especially but when the transition to 3d on the PS2 I uh, Kind of lost interest a bit, but I've played them over recent years and I do quite enjoy them. And Rayman M is just Rayman, but it's multiplayer. Um, I believe there's like, you know, battle arenas and stuff and like races with different characters from the Rayman universe. So, you know, something good to play with a friend. And yeah, just not your standard Rayman game. It's got like a, it's very much, you know, based around this kind of multiplayer element, which, you know, sounds like really fun. And I'm sure me and the band will have some fun right, with that. Right, the next three are fighting games from Namco. And if they're fighting games and I haven't got them, I'm going to get them PS2 or not. The first one's Tekken 5. It's Tekken 5. Um, brilliant fighting game. All the Tekken games, I love them. Kind of just improve over time. Um, and yeah, just, I don't need to say much about Tekken. It's Tekken. Who's your favourite Tekken character? If you say Eddie, then I'm going to absolutely hit the roof. Come on. Your shit. Next two. More Namco fighting games. Soul Calibur's 2 and 3 on the PlayStation 2. Um, one ninety nine each. And yeah, I just, um, I didn't have these games. And I, I remember my friend playing a lot of them. I think I've got, uh, I've got Soul Blade. Um, that's really good. But yeah, I... I do like the like the kind of versus mode on it and stuff, but there's like this, what's it called? It's like a conquest of the sword, chronicles of the sword mode is what it's called. And it's kind of like, it's like a story mode and it's it's on two, but it's much improved on like in the third one. And it's, it's just like a kind of story mode. And as you go along and beat more enemies, obviously in the obviously typical beat em up style, but 
you know as you win matches and stuff you get more experience and you can level up and you take um you know when you beat people you take their weapons and stuff and you can use them weapons later on and yeah i mean it's just really challenging and just loads and loads of fun so i sold calibar it's pretty much tekken with weapons and you can't join. Right, the next stack of PS1 games. I used to find these all the time in charity shops, like PS2 games, yeah, but PS1 games I used to find loads and they're just getting like hen's teeth now. I just, I cannot find them for love and money in charity shops. And when I do that, titles like this, Animal Snap on the PlayStation 1. <laughs> Don't ask us why, it must have been a long day and I was just desperate to get anything. It is Snap on your PlayStation 1. I mean, who would have thought you could have a whole game of Snap? on your PlayStation 1. It's almost as impressive as Pro Backgammon. I think I've put that horrible game away. Yeah, Animal Snap, 99 pence. I suppose it's a PlayStation 1 box at the end of the day. Hooray! Next game, it's pretty decent. It's Formula 197. Um, I've never ran across this, funnily enough, and I remember it being really common back in the day. Um, and it, back in the day, it was pretty much the ultimate like um, Formula 1 simulation game. You know, you can run a whole season with all the teams and racers from the Formula 1 97 season. And yeah, I remember it being like a really like good um, like simulation of the sport. And I remember back in the mid to late 90s, I mean, Formula 1 was massive. Not that it's any less big now, but I mean, even to the point where someone like, like me was interested in it, you know, like Damon Hill's era and stuff. And this was right about that time. And yeah, just a really, really good simulation. And this was 99 pence, and I like me racing The next games. two are pretty good PlayStation 1 games. Um, I've had Rayman M, and now I've got Rayman 2. Like I said, I love the original Rayman um, on PlayStation 1. This is kind of, it's a bit of a departure, because this is where the game kind of switched from a 2D side-scroll at a more of like a, a 3D platform game kind of, you know, sort of thing that they were going for, rather than... You know just a straight 2d platformer which is one of the things that i loved about the original because it just looks so beautiful and played so well but i mean even the 3d um rayman games are pretty good and yeah i just i really like them for some reason i know a lot of the good 3d platformers were on the n64 but playstation did have some and this is definitely one of them so rayman 2 yeah i was actually chuffed a bits to get this and this was a charity shop um, 199 I believe, I can't remember which one, it might have been the PDSA, but to be fair I've been to that bloody many recently. See, next one, another classic, and for some reason I didn't have it, I've got the original, but this is the best one that's on PlayStation 1, well this is the best one ever, it's Tomb Raider 2. Um, why the hell didn't I have this game, I don't know, but I was chuffed a bits to see it, I, this was a cash converters I think, and this was only 99 pence. So uh, this is this was definitely my favourite Tomb Raider game back in the day and I'm pretty sure it's the, one of the more highly regarded Tomb Raider games and yeah what can I say I mean it's it's Tomb Raider in all its you know great polygon titty glory. And I remember having a lot of fun with the cheats back in the day I remember just giving myself all the weapons and unlimited ammo and just going out and blasting blasting everybody and yeah i think the end of, uh, another part i remember as well as being in venice and you know riding along the canals in venice that's a part that sticks out in my mind in a motorbike and um, chase sequence as well so i tune in too i'm actually looking forward to playing this again i don't know how good it'll be to go back to this game you know sometimes i find it hard to go back to ps1 games like i'll have them bigged up in my head like oh i'm gonna go back and play that and it'll be brilliant like it was in the day and you play it and you know, it's still a good game, but, you know, it's, like, control-wise and that, it can be a little bit clunky. And as far as the graphics go, I mean, it wasn't the best in that era. But, you know, I'll still go back and play it, and I'm sure I'll have loads of memories from back in the day when I used to play it. Memory, like the shadows of my mind. Right then, the next one is off eBay, and basically I'm always on eBay just looking at... Uh, Super Nintendo and NES games that I can pick up for maybe it's like between five and ten pounds and they're not always the best ones but it's just like games that I can get that you know are maybe it's worth say 15 to 20 pound and I can pick them up for just a little bit less and I seen well I seen I managed to get like F0 for about six pound fifty I think it was and then I think it was like 250 postage on top of that but I mean I'd, I'd seen this going for like between 12 and 15 pound and it just seemed like a good deal because I know this is a really common game and it's a similar thing that I had with the Super Mario All-Stars. I think I picked my copy of Super Mario All-Stars up 
for like literally five, six pound on eBay. And I seen it in CEX and it was gone for like 30 pound. This is like a couple of years later, like down the line. But you know, you think that's a really, really common game. It came packed, it came bundled in with a console at some point. So like, I just, I can't justify paying that kind of money for games, you know, that, that I, I was picking up for like five, six pound, even on eBay a few years ago. So, you know, I always have my eye out for these little common titles and F-Zero was one of them. And just a really fun uh, racing game utilizing Mode 7 that, that I never really played back in the day. I never even heard of it back in the day, which is really surprising since it was one of the biggest Super Nintendo games around. And yeah, pretty common game, but you know, just to get a loose snares caught for under 10 pound, that just seems, decent to me because everybody knows what the prices are like not just in the charity shops at ebay and everywhere it's just getting ridiculous so it's a fucking joke right the next one i've got to give credit to all ass because she she seen something on facebook that she knew i'd like and she she went out and she bought it that night and then came back and you know plonked it in front of us and i was absolutely chuffed to bits um it was the atari flashback 3 um 60 built-in atari games now um to be fair i haven't got much of like a like much nostal nostalgia for the for like the Atari 2600 but it's something that I want to play and want to experience I was very much um playing like the Amstrad um and I remember my uncle having a Spectrum those were like the first two games that uh, like computers that I ever played on it was a Amstrad CPC in uh, my uncle's ZX Spectrum so you know because Atari wasn't like a powerhouse over here I mean people did have them don't get us wrong but it's not something i have experienced but obviously now i'm kind of collecting and playing all that games it's something i want to i want you know to have a go on but i don't necessarily want to go out and buy the console and you know i spend i've seen them gone for like maybe it's like a hundred pound with a few loose carts and i'm just thinking well, i don't want to do that just to play some atari and then it's can i get it working on my tv you know all that malarkey and whereas this it's just plug and play and get on and i've got like 60 built-in Atari games and there's some pretty good ones Um, what was I playing? What was I playing loads of? Oh god, I can't find it for the life of us <laughs> Missile Command, I was playing loads of Missile Command That's great fun Basically you've got like four bases on the ground Kind of similar to how Space Invaders is But there's loads of missiles coming in And you've got to intercept them with your own like missiles to blow them up before they hit your bases and honestly it was so addictive um, even the Ben had a go and he was loving um, asteroids and um, what else was he playing he was playing the bowling game and we we're playing each other on basketball as well and that was just you know it was quite fun I mean the game works and it was really really fun and um, really quirky and that and I the Ben had loads of fun with it so just to pick this up she got it for like a tenner so happy days I mean if I see any of these knocking around for like about a tenner I'll definitely get some more I think there's about six so I just just chuffed to get that and I've had it on a few times since I've since I've gotten it I'll probably not play it again for ages like it'll just sit on the shelf but honestly I was chuffed to bits that Wall Ash just went out and seen something that I'd like and just picked it up for us because you know she's not really that switched on when it comes to video games and all that stuff um or interested in it in any way shape or form so for her to do this like just meant a lot and I get to play a little bit of Atari so champion Re that's pretty much it for now then um as far as retro game bargain hunting videos go um, my last big one was when I went down to Leeds and I did the Retro Games Fair, um, which was absolutely brilliant. Well, I'm actually going to the Super Retro Games Fair, which is in Leeds, um, Leeds University Union, on the 24th of June. Um, and I absolutely cannot wait. There's, there's a pretty big squad who are going, I'm going, Chris and Gar from Retro Heads are going, Calling All Nerds, uh, Lee's going, and Quinny from Super Quintendo, Craig, he's going as well, they're all definites. Um, and if you're going, let us know, maybe we can meet up and have a beer and just, you know, look for some cheap games, because that's what I'm all about. But um, as far as the event goes, I mean, you can watch my last video it was just absolutely fantastic just loads of games and consoles and imports and it was just absolutely amazing just geek heaven and a sensory overload but what i'll do is i'll link that video in the description so you can see all the great stuff that i got that day and honestly i'll, I'll link the the retro events like website and their facebook page so you can check out when all their other events are coming or if you fancy coming to this one on the 24th of june because honestly it's just amazing events the sellers are brilliant the guy who organizes it steve's just absolutely brilliant as well uh just you know so inviting and just helpful and as far as like uh 
like games and that go there's just so many but the best thing is there are deals to be had there because you think oh loads of sellers there's not deals but if you watch my last video you'll see i got loads of great deals because the sellers the traders they're all just you know spot on and you know they understand like you know that they're, they're collectors as well and they're just all top blokes so i'm really looking forward to you know i'm meeting up with the with these other with the other youtubers you know chris and gavin lee and quinny and anybody else who's coming i'm taking my mate alan as well because he's seen me last video and he's desperate to go so if you fancy it on the 24th of june let us know in the comments you know if you're going already let us know and if you fancy it because you've just heard us talk about it just let us know because honestly i cannot wait for it 24th of june but i that's pretty much it for now so i'll just leave you like always doing so thank you very much for watching people hopefully i'll catch you next time bye